And let me just explain why it's Obergefell v. Hodges. It's nothing more magical or complicated than we were the very first case filed after Windsor versus the United States. That's it. So luck of timing. That's why it's Obergefell v. Hodges. So I honestly have to say thank you really does not seem sufficient enough at this moment. I've had so many amazing experiences this year, but to have my hero and my friend, Edie Windsor, present me an award is certainly one of the highlights of the past two years. Absolutely. Edie, you are an inspiration to me. Without your courage and your leadership, I wouldn't be standing here. I wouldn't have been able to marry the love of my life. And I wouldn't be part of bringing marriage equality to the entire United States. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm honored to share the stage with Edie this evening. And as always, I'm proud and honored to call her my friend and my hero. Thank you, Sage. I respect and greatly appreciate the work that you do on behalf of LGBT elders, and I'm humbled by this great honor. I seriously don't think of myself as a pioneer, a hero, or any of the other words people have used to describe me. I simply think of myself as my husband John's partner, a co-conspirator in the adventure I was lucky enough to share with him, and finally, luckily, as his husband. That's it. And honestly, that's more than enough. John and, I, John and I made a lot of promises to each other over our almost 21 years together. We promised to love, honor, and protect each other. We were just never able to do that publicly and have it carry any legal weight until Edie stepped forward. We made our decision to marry and then sue the state of Ohio at a very painful, personal point in our life together. John was dying of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and he was in at-home hospice care. I was his full-time caregiver. It was difficult, it was scary, and it was overwhelming. But it was also the greatest privilege of my life. I'd promised to love and protect him, and I can think of no better way to do that than to care for him when he could no longer do that for himself. And that's what marriage is all about, for better and for worse. John and I were facing many issues that I'm sure resonate with many of you here this evening. Healthcare, financial challenges, legal considerations, and more. We were just facing them before the age of 50. Thank you, Sage, for being there to fight for us on these issues that many of us will face one day. Now, getting married when we did didn't solve those issues for us, but it did bring us something we desperately wanted, legal recognition of our relationship and to have our federal government acknowledge simply that we existed. We never dreamed that our decision to marry on the tarmac of the Baltimore-Washington International Airport would help lead our country to nationwide marriage equality. Leading up to and after the Supreme Court decision, a common theme was love wins. Well, love did indeed win. I'm humbled that John's love for me and my love for him helped make our country a better place. People oftentimes seem surprised to learn that John and I had been together for as long as we were. There seemed to be this misperception that we, as gay men, couldn't be together in a committed relationship that long, that we could love one person for decades. And I'm glad to say that I've met many couples across the country who put John's and my 21 years to shame. Am I surprised by that? No, not at all. And I'm gratified to see the joy on these couples' faces when they tell me about their multiple anniversaries. 
their first date, another perhaps if they married prior to nationwide marriage equality, and then another when they married following a Supreme Court decision. Parents thank me because their families are now secure. Their children have two legal parents and their future is no longer in limbo. I'm humbled when people thank me for my part in their happiness. And I can never repay these couples and families for the gift of joy that they give me. I knew John and I did the right thing by fighting for our marriage and for millions of people across our country. And these personal moments reinforce just how right John and I were. I owe my thanks to all of you and the many people who came before me. I stand proudly on your shoulders. Without your courage and sacrifice, I wouldn't be the man I am or in this place. Thank you for being an example of dignity, self-respect, and love in the face of adversity. Over the past several months, I've had the pleasure of talking with our future, our young people, at community centers, youth organizations, universities, and more. It's encouraging to see how different their world is from what we experience. Although the world today is more supportive than it was for me as a kid, we still have work to do, as proven by an experience I had just two weeks ago. I just spoke in a Bowling Green State University in Ohio, my alma mater for graduate school, and I had the opportunity to meet students afterwards. A young man slipped a note into my hand when, he shook, when we shook hands, and I cried when I read it later that evening. He told me how he always knew that he was different, how he attempted suicide many times, and how he never believed he could find happiness. He ended his note by thanking me for helping him on his path to happiness. And I'd like to share his final words to me with you. I wish I'd had the self-awareness to say this to the brave men and women who came before me, so I guess this is my chance now. I can walk with more confidence knowing that happiness is possible, not despite being gay, but because of being gay. Thank you very much for this wonderful honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Edie. And I want to tell you all in closing that we did indeed prove tonight that love truly wins, that we can and will stand up for our LGBT elders. Tonight, we have raised more than $750,000 to support Sage's work. That is a tremendous record. It shows tremendous, tremendous generosity. So on behalf of SAGE, on behalf of our constituents, our staff, our board, our volunteers, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank you.